Hello everyone, Pahamar here with episode 15 of Let's Mod Reboot. In today's episode, I am going to show you how to do key bindings. So key bindings are a concept um, that quite simply just involve um, registering uh, keys that you would like to listen to when, uh, so that when they're pressed you can run code. Um, really kind of bad explanation there, but um, yeah, the short of it is is that uh, key bindings are basically your way of saying to Minecraft, okay, uh, when someone presses a button on their keyboard or on their mouse, uh, I want to know about it, and I want to be able to do something with it. So Minecraft itself has several key bindings uh, built into it. Today I'm going to show you how to add your own. Key bindings, um, because they involve manual input uh, on a keyboard or a mouse, um, specifically involve um, the client side only. So this is probably, I believe, our first good use of the uh, proxies. You remember from our proxy video that a proxy is a good way to uh, externalize um, side-specific behavior, so that um, when the code is executed on the server side, uh, server side stuff happens, and when the code is executed on the client side, client side stuff happens. So when it comes to key bindings nothing happens on the server side but everything happens on the client side so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a, a method to our iProxy interface so public abstract void register key bindings of course before you can actually use key bindings you have to register them so you'll notice that by adding this to our iProxy we don't get an error in our common proxy but we will get one each in server and client. So for server, I'm going to implement the method and I'm just going to add a comment here called NOP. Um, this stands for no operation. So what that means is when this code is executed on the server side, nothing will happen. However, on the client side, this is where our code will happen. So what goes in here? On the client side here, this is where we register them. So client registry, register key binding. You'll notice here is looking for a key binding. What is a key binding? Let us have a look. So let's look at the key binding in net Minecraft client settings. A key binding uh, takes a name, it takes a category, and uh, it actually takes the integer value associated with the key in question. So let's have a look at uh, the constructor here. So here you go. It takes in a string, an integer, and a string. So this is the category. This is the key itself. This is the name of the key. So we have our basic um, understanding of how to register a key binding. So this will just continue to throw an error. Uh, we actually need to specify our keys now. So what keys we want to listen to. So why don't we do that? So now that we have a basic understanding of where we register our key bindings, we actually need to make our key bindings. Uh, so there's a couple things we're going to want to do first. Um, first, we need to actually uh, set up the names for them and the category for them, because uh, of, as always, we want to make sure that they are able to be translated into multiple languages. So the first thing we need to do is come into our reference class here. And I think now we should get ourselves into our uh, first reference class for names. So here we go, names. And I'm actually going to make this a final class. Uh, final just basically means that no one can extend it and add other things to it. This is the final version of the class. And inside of it, I'm going to add a another one called keys. So here we have the class names, and inside of it, it has an inner class, uh, a static final class called keys. And inside of here is where we will have our entries uh, for the category. So keys uh, category equal keys. Let's mod. I'll do it this way. Let's no oh, keys. Let's mod reboot. Um, category and let's do public 
static final. So these are just going to be the names for our keys. So here I've added a constant uh, here. I've added a constant for our category. Uh, let's do a charge. So keys, let's mod reboot charge. And release. Okay. So all we've done here is we've um, we've set ourselves up constants that reference the actual values uh, that we'll put inside of our uh, language file here. So why don't we do that as well? Okay. You know what? Let's actually organize this a little bit better as well. It always helps to know what these things are for. So here we go, creative tabs, items, blocks, keys. So we'll come back to this guy and we'll just do this. Charge, release. So we'll say this is let's mod reboot, charge, release. And you'll see why this is uh, used in a moment here. So we've added ourselves a reference class to actually store the localizations for these things. Um, now, another thing I like to do is I'm going to add an enumeration. And I'm going to call it key. So this enumeration is going to reference the various keys we're dealing with. And you'll see in a moment why that's helpful. And you'll notice that I'm doing this, uh, I'm doing both the localization and this enumeration on the common side. So I'm not putting it in client or anything. It's, it's in the reference package. And the reason we're going to do that is because now we are going to add ourselves our um, key bindings. So because they are client, I'm going to put them in the client side here. I'm going to add a new package called settings. And inside of settings, I'm going to add a new class called key bindings. Inside here, I'm now actually going to start setting up my key binding. So you want to make sure that when you import it, you're importing the Minecraft client settings key binding. The reason we have our key bindings inside of our client settings package is because that's how Minecraft likes to do it in theirs. So we allowed ourselves a charge key binding because we've specified in our names here two. So we will do new key binding. And this is why I added that new class. So we will import our names class, keys, charge. Uh, this is where we specify the integer the value that um, the key is. But you can actually do it like this. Uh, key C. And names, keys, category. We'll import that class. OK. So the, let's go over the anatomy of this again. So here we are specifying ourselves a, a key binding called charge. We are initializing it as a new key binding object. We're giving it the name. We are giving it the category here. This guy right here is actually a helpful constants class that um, LWJGL, the library that Minecraft uses for getting um, doing graphics and sounds and actually not sounds, but keyboard input and whatnot. This keyboard class inside of the uh, LWJGL library has these constants here that map keys to values. And these actually, so key C represents this va this uh, hex value. So um, I don't off the top of my head know what the integer uh, equivalent of this is. But this basically is the ASCII value for the C key on your keyboard. So what I'm saying is when someone presses the C key, it's related to this key binding. So, and I'll just do a quick copy and I will add our release key. Key 
R. Okay, so now that we have our key bindings uh, set up in here, uh, in our key bindings, we've created them, we've initialized them, uh, we've registered them. Now we just need to make sure that we actually call this inside of our law, um, let's mod reboot mod class. Uh, and you know what? Let's move this log helper to the end here. Okay. So in order to uh, register them, you actually have to call your proxy object and you need to execute the method. So once again, because we've only done it in the client proxy, not in the server proxy or the common proxy, this method here will only do this on the client side. It won't do anything on the server side. So let's load up Minecraft and see how it looks. Okay, so now that Minecraft is loaded up, if we go into Options, Controls, and scroll down, we will see that we have a Let's Mod Reboot section here. We have a Charge Key, it's set to C, and we have a Release Key set to R. And I just want to show too that you can actually remap these. Uh, let's pick one that's not a conflict, so P and M. If we had done, and close out Minecraft. And if we were to load it up again, uh, you should see that they are actually set to, they still um, kept those values. So if we come back into options, controls, we were to come back down here, you'll see that they have uh, retained their new mapping of M and P. And uh, the reason I wanted to show this is because I wanted to assure you guys that if someone were to be playing your mod and they were to remap the key bindings here, you can still reference this uh, key bindings charge object and this key bindings release object, even though it's not mapped to that particular key anymore, you can still map to these objects uh, and they will still fire when someone presses the new key. So if I were to uh, press M, then you would know that charge is still going to be executed. But uh, I should actually show you how you can listen to when those keys are pressed. So now that we've registered the key bindings, we actually need to be able to execute code when they are pressed. Uh, and you actually need to do this with a key input event handler. Uh, when a key is pressed, an event gets fired uh, for that particular key. So we need to set up a handler class to listen to those events and actually run code uh, when they happen. Uh, so once again, because keys are done on the client side, we are going to add it to the client package. And I'm actually going to add a handler package, so client handler. And inside of handler, I'm going to add my key input event handler class. And inside of it, I'm going to subscribe public void handle key input event. Input event. key input event. Okay. And so now that I've got that set up, let's just come back to the Let's Mod Reboot class here. And once again, let's check. This key put input event is in the FML package, so I want to register it here. Okay. So all I've done right now is I've um, added a, uh, a skeleton, stubbed out, whatever you want to call it, key input event handler, and I've made sure to register it in my pre-init. And I, yep, no, that's in the correct location. Actually, I made an error, guys. We actually want to register this particular one in init. So, now we have our handle key input event here. Um, what can we actually do here? So, when a key is pressed, uh, it will execute this method here. So what you actually want to do is you want to make sure, um, let us see. Okay, now that we have the uh, event handler registered in the correct location for this particular uh, key input, uh, I wanted to, to just briefly show you what is involved in the input event, because you're not going to get a lot of data just from the event itself. So if we were to look at this, we can see the key input event extends uh, an input event and this is where you get the mouse and the key input events um, so you can actually subscribe to mouse clicks and, and mouse moves and whatnot this way you'll notice that there's no data in this it, the event gives you nothing it just notifies you that there has been a change in uh, um, some kind of input uh, so for key inputs uh, it'll let you know when a key has been pressed for mouse inputs it'll let you know what a mouse click has been uh, pressed so what i'm going to do 
because I'm not getting a lot of data from this event, is I'm going to add a new private method here that tells me the key binding that has been pressed. Remember that key enumeration that we added before? What this method's going to do is I'm going to fire this when a key is pressed, and I'm going to return a value here to let me know what I need to do. And so let me show you what that means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the different key bindings that I actually uh, have here that I've registered. So key bindings charge is pressed key charge key bindings release is pressed return key release key unknown. Okay, so you're hopefully starting to see um, how I've structured all these other classes before. So what happens here is I can actually do, let's see, log helper info uh, get pressed key binding. So what happens now is whenever a key is pressed, this code will run here. It'll come into here and it'll go, okay, has the key binding charge been pressed? And this just basically tells you um, if the button has actually been pushed down on the keyboard. So if this button has been pressed, I want to return that value from the enumeration. Uh, if the release one has been pressed, re return the release one. If, the, if we don't know what one has been pressed, uh, return unknown. So let's run this and actually see it in action. So to test this, we'll need to go into the world and keep an eye on the Okay, so now that we're in world, keep an eye in here, uh, in the, uh, and I'm pointing at the screen again, you can't see that. Keep an eye at the log thing uh, in the background there as I press keys. So see, I just pressed E, brought up the inventory, and we got an unknown. If I were to press R, we got an unknown, because we have still have release mapped to P. So if I were to press P, you see that the release key was detected. If I were to press M, which is the charge key, we see charge. If I were to come back in here and reset these to the defaults, I just pressed P again, we get unknown. I pressed M, we got unknown. If I press C, we get charge. And if I press R, we get release. Very important to realize at this point, this is only client side. So if you wanted to tie these key bindings to things like opening up a GUI and everything, um, the server does not know what has happened. Uh, when we get into networking, I'm actually going to use key bindings um, as a way uh, to show you how you can send messages back and forth from the client and the server uh, so that you can actually notify the server when a key has been pressed. Um, so for example, vanilla handles it such that when you press E, it knows that the player has pressed E and it needs to open up the uh, the inventory for the player so the server is aware that the player has opened their inventory. But at this point, these keys do nothing. So that's pretty much, I think, all we need to go over right now for key bindings. Um, like I said, in a later episode, I will show you how to, uh, to notify the server through the networking concepts in Minecraft that a player has pressed a particular button. Um, but for now, this should show you everything you need to do in terms of org, um, setting up your own key bindings. Um, any code you want to run when a key binding has been pressed goes in this handle key input event. And uh, this is just a helper private method I find very, very useful in terms of telling me in a side agnostic method, uh, method, um, con side agnostic um, idea um, what key has been pressed because we're tying the key binding to this enumeration. Uh, so it doesn't matter what this value is, what key this is associated with, I'm getting the abstract concept that the charge key has been pressed or the release key has been pressed. So uh, let's wrap it up for this episode. Um, next episode I will show you how to load in and play your own sounds in Minecraft. Uh, until then, um, 
Do you guys know the drill? Take it easy.